Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about imaging with X-rays. Now the thing about the first year physics exam is that it is a true or false type of exam. Now this actually makes the exam more challenging because a lot of people, especially if you're from India, that you you are not accustomed to writing uh, exams in this pattern. Now this creates a lot of challenges for us in preparation, especially during the initial phase because we are just not accustomed to writing exams in this format so what is happening is we tend to spend a lot of time focusing on areas from where questions might not be asked and even the opposite is true that uh, we tend to miss the portions which are actually important and have a high chance of being asked in the exam now the best advice anyone can give you regarding the uh, FRCA physics exam is to reach each word of the question carefully. Now this is because they tend to interchange, uh, they tend to give a correct sentence and just interchange the main, uh, the main subject that about which they are asking. Like for instance, uh, Compton effect and Bremster long like they are, uh, they are like processes that occur. Uh, kind of similar in a way if you think about it, but one is occurring. Uh, within the x-ray tube and the other one is occurring uh, within a patient so they might give a correct sen sentence about Bremstelong and then they just change the word Bremstelong with Compton effect and similarly they often kind of interchange uh, x-rays with electrons like they say they could give you a question like um, an image is formed when x-rays more when electrons pass through a subject and get attenuated now that's wrong because like the uh, image is formed when x-rays are, are getting attenuated as they pass through the patient. Today's topic, uh, image uh, imaging with x-rays. So the first, uh, the first topic is uh, image quality. Now image quality is uh, determined by two factors. One is contrast. As you all know, contrast is the ability to uh, distinguish adjacent gray areas in the image. And the other one is spatial resolution. As uh, you all already know, it is the ability to distinguish fine detail in the image. Now coming to spatial resolution, uh, spatial resolution is expressed in line pairs per minute. So uh, one line and one space will make up one line pair. So in this case, we will have like a total three if you in include this space too. So we have like three line pairs, three lines and three spaces. So the smallest visible detail uh, size is approximately half of the inverse of the resolution in line pairs per minute. So for instance, if you have like uh, 10 line pairs per millimeter, uh, then the smallest visible detail is like 0 0.05. So what you have to do is like you have to take the inverse of 10, which is 0 0.1 and then you have to half it and then you get this value. Now noise refers to the uh, random variations in the number of photons detected but which are which are unrelated to the subject. So if you can imagine a thin sheet of lead and then you showed x-rays and try to make a film. Now this is especially regarding old film screen radiography. Then uh, you will notice that the image which is formed is not perfectly uh, uniform. Uh, if you kind of look carefully like it will have a little bit kind of mottled appearance and the reason uh, it has this mottled appearance is because of noise. Now noise mainly affects uh, contrast resolution and not spatial resolution. The most significant source of noise is quantum noise. Now uh, noise can be because of both uh, the digital imaging system or as well as the uh, as well as because of uh, the random nature of events like x-ray protection or x-ray detection and things like that now because uh, every time even if you are imaging the same object but uh, every time the number of photons that are getting detected in the film will be different will be slight almost the same but a little bit of slight difference will be there because all of these processes are uh, dependent on probability and that that variation because of the probability is uh, known as quantum noise. Now just some statistics. Uh, the variation in the number of randomly occurring events is related to the square root of the average root m. Now noise decreases the ability to visualize low contrast regions especially if they are very small. 
now noise is uh, proportional to 1 by root of m which means that uh, the more the number of x-ray photon that you have the less will be noise also uh, signal to noise ratio is proportional to like m by root of m like signal is m and noise is 1 by root m so calculating that signal to noise ratio is proportional to root of m so which means the more number of photons that you have the more signal to noise noise ratio that you have and also the more photons or more x-rays that are detected the less noise you will have now about contrast uh, subject contrast is due to the attenuation of the x-rays by the subject so if you imagine a chest x-ray uh, the lung regions will appear more radiolucent and any bone visualized in the chest x-ray will uh, appear much more radio dense now this contra contrast is because of the inherent nature of this structure that we are uh, imaging now subject contrast depends on many uh, parameters which uh, include uh, first is the difference in the total linear attenuation coefficients uh, of the tissues that are involved and the second one is the thickness of the structure so if you are imaging uh, an elbow then you will have bone as well as soft tissue so the contrast is determined by the um, difference in the uh, attenuation coefficient of soft tissue compared to bone and also uh, contrast also depends on the thickness of the structure because uh, if you can just uh, imagine a chest x-ray and then if you there is uh, part of the humerus that is visualized which will be much more dense uh, compared to any of the ribs and that is because although both of them are bone the ribs are usually much more thinner and the humerus is more thicker now one uh, key point is that the linear attenuation coefficient further depends on the tissue density atomic number electron density as well as uh, the voltage that is applied so as you can imagine <coughs> the more tissue density a structure has the more will be the attenuation coefficient uh, and structures with uh, higher atomic numbers usually have more uh, attenuation coefficient now that is the reason why uh, lead is used in filtration and radiation protection and all because it has a higher atomic number and hence uh, it attenuates x-rays much more better uh, another one is electron density uh, as you know the uh, linear attenuation coefficients like uh, Compton effect, photoelectric effect both of them are, uh, at, are dependent are actually interactions with the electrons of the object so the more electrons there are the more will be the chance of interaction and more will be attenuation coefficient another one is uh, the uh, voltage that is applied now this might be a little confusing because uh, some of some of you might think that uh, linear attenuation coefficient uh, is related to the substance and not of the object uh, but actually linear attenuation is co coefficient is not related to the subject it is not like lead as a higher at attenuation coefficient compared to something like air but actually uh, it is related to the object like if you have one block of lead and then if you have another block of lead that is much more thicker then the uh, attenuation coefficient of this block of lead is more compared to the, the smaller block of lead now one way to remember that is uh, if you remember the formula for uh, attenuation coefficient it is equal to 0 0.693 divided by half value layer so as you know half value layer is the thickness of the substance that uh, attenuates the attenuates x rays by half so because of that uh, just keep in mind that um, linear attenuation coefficient is related to the object and not the material of the object so it is related to the voltage that is applied and also uh, another one question that they might ask is subject contrast depends on like option a photoelectric effect option b compton effect so it is the total linear attenuation coefficient so it depends on both of them 
they might also also ask whether uh, subject contrast depends on uh, the current and the molecular molecular configuration actually these are the only parameters which it depends on so anything else they give including ma's molecular configuration and all it is not dependent these are the only parameters that are involved the contrast between bone and muscle is high at low low kilo voltage now this is because um, at low kilo voltage uh, or at low voltage uh, both photoelectric effect and compton effect play an important role uh, in bone but uh, the thing about photoelectric effect is that it is inversely proportional to the cube of the energy so at higher kilo voltage uh, at higher voltages photoelectric the effect uh, the, or the contribution from photoelectric effect decreases drastically so uh, what is basically happening is uh, at low kilo voltage both photoelectric effect and compton effect are happening for bone but for muscle only compton effect is happening but at higher kilo voltages for both and muscle only compton effect is happening so because of that at a lower uh, kilo voltage you might be able to see a more uh, contrast between muscle and bone uh, and also uh, one thing about compton effect it is that it is uh, it is also inversely proportional to em energy but uh, compared to photoelectric effect photoelectric effect is inversely proportional to the cube of the energy so for uh, iodine and soft tissue uh, the situation is same and you will get more contrast between iodine and soft tissue at a lower kilo voltage now one thing about uh, contrast media is that the absorption edge of the contrast media should lie just to the left of the major part of the spectrum of the x-rays leaving the patient now they might not they might try to trick you and uh, change this to right and ask you the question so just keep that in mind also just uh, remember these parameters like uh, the atomic number of iodine is 53 and the uh, energy of k shell is 33 they might interchange this value and uh, try to confuse you the contrast between very low atomic tissues atomic number tissues such as fat and muscle don't decrease much when kb is increased now this is because uh, although at higher energies compton effect decreases but for both fat and muscle uh, even at higher energies compton effect will be decreased and so that relative difference will be maintained and that is why the contrast doesn't decrease much and also it is interesting to know that the contrast between air and soft tissue is actually mainly because of their difference in density because both of them have very similar atomic numbers now they might trick you and ask like they might give you a statement like the contrast between air and soft tissue is because of their atomic numbers but that statement is wrong, wrong. coming to patient dose now this is a very important topic uh, it is like almost sure that they will ask questions on this topic uh, just two values to remember the one is that the minimum dose required to produce a satisfactory image for film screen radiography is 3 microgray and for fluoroscopy it is 0 0.2 to 0 0.05 micro gray per second now let's look at uh, what happens when some of the parameters are changed so when you increase the MAS and you increase the current without changing any other parameters what happens is both the entrance and exit dose increase proportionately so what is happening is more MA you will have more number of x-rays that are produced with the same mean energy and the same maximum energy so uh, this is just an example to show this is a theoretical example values will be wrong just to know what is happening uh, suppose at 4 ampere you have 100 x-rays reaching the patient and out of that 100 x-rays 50 of the x-rays pass through the patient and reach the film so you have 50 percent pass rate of the x-rays in another case uh, suppose you are shooting 8 ampere uh, 8 ampere x-rays and out of that 
because of the uh, sorry if you are applying 8 ampere of current 200 x rays will be produced which will reach the patient and out of that 100 of the x rays will reach the film so here also if you notice that that percentage is maintained like earlier also it was like a 50 percent pass rate of x rays and even in the second case uh, there is still a 50 percent pass rate of x rays so you know that increasing the ma does not increase the proportion of the x rays that are passing the proportion will be same now let's look when we increase the kilo voltage when you're using a higher kilo voltage it makes the beam more penetrating so what happens is more kilo voltage here also you would have more number of x-rays but with increased mean and maximum energy so uh, as a result of this uh, a lower entrance dose is needed for the same exit dose this is because most of the energies most of the x-rays have a higher energy and most of the x-rays are thus able to pass through the patient so another theoretical ex example to show what is happening suppose you have 50 uh, if you are applying 50 kilovolt uh, and suppose you have 100 x-rays which are produced and reach the patient out of that 50 x-rays are uh, reaching passing through the patient and reaching the film so in which case you have a 50 percent pass rate of x-rays now another uh, now consider you are increasing the kilo voltage to 60 now what is happening is uh, you have 150 x-rays that are reaching the patient out of that 100 x-rays are reaching the film so in this case you have an increased proportion of x-rays that are passing through the patient so another thing uh, you might have noticed is in this case only after doubling the doubling the current was the uh, output x-ray output increased but even a small increase in kilo voltage actually increases the output of the x-ray significantly now the reason for that is the x-ray tube output is proportional to kv square but in the case of uh, current it is only directly proportional to ma so it is uh, x-ray output is proportional to kv square into ma now they might also try to confuse you and ask um, uh, like skin dose rate is proportional to kv square so actually both of these are same if you imagine x-ray output and the skin dose rate they are basically the same thing now another thing just to remember is the film screen dose is proportional to kv raised to 4 so this is the dose at the at the screen or like at the x-ray film uh, or the like like the dose of x-rays that are reaching the film and that one is related proportional to kv raised to 4 now uh, increasing the filtration also has a similar effect in a way that the what happens is the lower energy x-rays are being cut off so because of that uh, the x-rays will have a higher mean energy and because of that more number of x-rays or the more proportion of x-rays will be able to pass through the patient so uh, increasing filtration reduces the skin dose as it increases the proportion of high energy x-ray x-rays although an increase in ma's is needed so the way how uh, filtration decreases the skin doses uh, suppose you have a spectrum of x-rays and supposing you have a spectrum like this like on the left end you have low energy x-rays and on the right hand you have high energy x-rays so actually by using a filter what happens is all of the low energy x-rays get cut off so this proportion of x-rays which have low energy are actually only contributing to the dose of the patient because these are those x-rays which actually hit the patient and don't cross the patient so what happens is uh, the, like most of the x-rays in this region just hit the patient and don't uh, cross over and reach the film to make the image so actually if we can cut out most, most of these unwanted x-rays then actually we can reduce the dose 
but only thing is a slight increase in MAS needed MAS is needed but overall uh, the net effect will be an increase a, a decrease in dose now another thing is uh, increasing the film focus distance it also serves to decrease dose to the patient and here also a slight increase in MAS is needed so just imagine this point A is the position of the x-ray tube and from here x-rays are being shot this circle is the object or the patient and then this line is the film is the x-ray film so in this case what is happening is x-rays are being produced from this point and x-rays are uh, passing through the patient and x-rays are hitting the film but if you notice here what is happening is all of the x-rays are concentrated on this small area of the patient so instead of keeping the x-ray tube here suppose you put it at a point B which is more far and now you know, if you imagine what is happening is the all the rays which are coming are actually being spread over in a wider area and because of this uh, in, from point A there is like a high dose per unit area but from point B it is being spread over the patient so effectively dose is reduced but the only problem is that because this distance is increased a slight increase in MAS will be needed to compensate compression of the patient decreases dose to the patient now this is because uh, because of uh, the tissue that is compressed now this is specifically in focus to mammography so uh, because the tissue is being compressed mm, there is thinner tissue to penetrate and because of that there is a reduction of the required exposure factors and also uh, because the tissue there is less tissue there is less scatter radiation and because of this we are able to use reduced exposure factors and by that way we are able to decrease the dose to the patient now another thing uh, grids and air gap techniques increase the patient dose but the reason that they are used is because uh, they help to uh, they help to counter the scatter rays that are reaching the patient and in that way they actually increase the uh, contrast resolution of the image now grids in the case of grids the exit dose needs to be increased by a factor which is equal to the grid factor of the grid to obtain the same film exposure now just a small recap uh, increasing MAS uh, increases both entrance and exit dose proportionately and it does not serve to decrease dose by using a higher KV we make the beam more penetrating and by that way we can actually decrease uh, patient dose Increasing filtration also uh, decreases the patient dose, although a slight increase in MAS is needed. Increasing the film focus also decreases dose to the patient, although a slight increase in MAS is needed. And compression of the patient also uh, helps in decreasing the dose to the patient. Now, these two increase the dose to the patient grit as well as air gap technique. Now, uh, coming to scatter radiation. Scatter radiation decreases the contrast resolution of the image. Now, uh, scatter radiation mainly depends on two things. One is the thickness of the patient's body and the area of the beam. So the more thicker tissue to penetrate, more will be scattered radiation. And more the area of the beam, more will be scattered radiation. Now, uh, the ratio of scattered radiation to primary radiation is usually uh, 4 is to 1 for chest PA and 9 is to 1 for lateral pelvis x-ray so as you can see like the amount of scatter radiation is much much more compared to the primary radiation and this uh, brings the importance of uh, collimation collimation thus uh, helps to decrease the scatter significantly because in collimation all the coll what collimation actually serves is it reduces the area of the beam into that part of the beam which is only actually needed so in that way it decreases scatter radiation a lot also uh, by uh, cutting off the unnecessary width of the beam it also decreases the effective dose to the patient just one thing like don't confuse collimation 
डोंट कन्फ्यूज कॉलिमेशन विथ एंटी स्कैटर ग्रेड्स दिस इज समथिंग टू कीप इन माइंड इन क्वेश्चन दे माइट इंटरचेंज दिस टू एंड आस्क यू सम क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू इट ना डिक्रीजिंग स्कैटर मे बी डन बाय रिड्यूसिंग दी फील्ड और रिड्यूसिंग द विथ ऑफ द बीम वी हैव जस्ट डिस्कस दैट एंड दैट इज बाय द यूज ऑफ कॉलिमेशन एंड अदर थिंग इज कंप्रेशन ऑफ द पेशेंट और द टिश्यू दिस वी हैव लाइक डिस्कस हियर बाय डिक्रीजिंग द थिकनेस ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड नाउ कमिंग टू सम पॉइंट्स बट द प्रॉब्लम विथ दीज पॉइंट्स इज दैट दिस इंक्रीज द पेशेंट डोज and the tube loading so they increase the amount of heat produced and also the uh, dose to the patient but the reason we are doing these methods is because uh, they do reduce scatter and by that way we are uh, getting a much more better image although the dose and uh, heat produced are more now first one is kv so if you decrease kv what happens is the rays will have lesser energy so because they have lesser energy they are easily defected so most of the scattered radiation are easily defected and don't reach till the film another thing is uh, all the scattered radiation already already radiation has a little less energy because of the low kv on top of that the scattered radiation will have even less uh, energy and also the scattered radiation usually has a little bit more longer path to cover because they are traveling obliquely and because of that uh, they would most likely not reach the film another method is using an anti scatter grid most of the scattered photons travel obliquely and will be absorbed by the anti scatter grid while most of the primary radiation will travel forward without being attenuated now another method which works very similarly is very similar to the anti scatter grid is by the use of a thin sheet of zinc on the film cassette now the last method is air gap technique so in air gap te technique the film is placed 30 cm just remember the value 30 cm or more away from the patient and then the obliquely traveling scatter misses the film so what happens is suppose you have a film here and then you have an object here and then if you are shooting x rays all the primary radiation will pass through the patient and then hit the film but in case you have a uh, radiation that is getting scattered so because of uh, this gap uh, the radiation will not hit the film but just compare this to another situation in which the uh, film is touching the patient so in this case the scatter radiation is still touch, uh, the scatter radiation and the primary radiation get uh, imprinted on the film so in air gap technique there is a reduc reduction in the intensity of primary radiation that is because of the increased distance there is a greater reduction in the intensity of the scatter radiation and also because of the gap the image will be a little bit more magnified as you can see here if you have a if you have an x ray focus and if you are imaging an object which is here and the film is touching the patient then the size will be more or less same maybe a little bit magnified but if you are using an air gap technique then what happens is because of the gap the film to focus distance is increased and what we get is a bigger image of the patient now air gap technique does cause an increase in dose this is because of the increased distance more distance that the uh, rays have to travel now air gap technique is very similar to using a grid but only thing is uh, it is not that effective as a grid but the problem with grid is grids will require much higher a higher dose increase to maintain the same exposure now an important point is that both air gap and anti scatter grid don't decrease the scatter protection so if you compare all the rest of the techniques like reducing the field compression of the patient so all these methods are actually decreasing the amount of 
scatter that is being produced but both air gap technique and anti scatter grid they don't scatter they don't decrease scatter production but only thing is they do is they reduce uh, scatter detection so just uh, pay attention to this in case they ask they might give you a sentence like air gap decreases scatter production so if you don't pay a lot of attention we might um, mistake it uh, coming to anti scatter grids they improve contrast resolution as it reduces scatter reaching the film it does not increase the spatial resolution now the typical the typical appearance is like uh, they will be having led strips and they will be separated by a gap so uh, the led strips are 0.06 mm wide so if you imagine this led strip this width is uh, 0.06 and these led strips are uh, separated by a gap of 0.19 so this gap is 0.19 and the small width of the led strip is 0.06 oh, uh, by seeing the images you might get a little confused because you might think that the gaps are filled with air but actually these uh, gaps are filled with either carbon fiber plastic or aluminium now the repetition in interval uh, is uh, 0.25 mm and that is calculated by adding the width of the led strip which is 0.06 along with the width of the gap so this total will be 0.06 plus 0.19 which is 0.25 the line density is typically 40 strips per centimeter so in one centimeter you would have usually uh, 40 strips now the grid ratio is the depth of the grip depth of the gap divided by the width of the gap so here this entire distance will be the depth of the gap divided by the width of the gap and this ratio is typically 8 is to 1 now another thing they might interchange the depth of the gap with the length of the strip which is uh, same so the greater the grid ratio better is the contrast a higher grid ratio is preferred in high kv setting now selectivity refers to the fraction of primary radiation transmitted per fraction of scattered radiation transmitted which is typically in the range of 6 to 12 the fraction of primary radiation transmitted can be calculated by the ratio of width of the gap divided by separation of the strips now grid factor uh, don't confuse it with grid ratio uh, grid factor is the exposure needed with a grid divided by exposure needed without a grid typically 3 to 5 which also means that an increase in dose by a factor of 3 to 5 is needed when you are using the grid contrast improvement factor which is the contrast with a grid divided by contrast without a grid typically 2 to 4 now one thing to note is that stationary grids uh, are used in ward photography in all other applications you usually use moving grids and in ward photography because you are using stationary grids you have to use a slightly increased line density now something they might ask is what happens if you increase the width or the length of the lead strips so suppose you are trying to make the strips a little uh, suppose this was the original one and you are actually making it more thick now what would happen so what happens is uh, you would see an increase in the in all of these parameters like you would see an increase in grid ratio increase in contrast increase in selectivity increase in grid factor all those things so will be moving in the same direction and same things happen when you increase the length of the lead strip so instead of this length suppose you using longer strips then the same thing you would have an increase in all of these factors another thing they might ask is they might just ask you the inverse like what happens when the gap between the strips this gap what happens when this gap is increased 
so in that case all of these factors will decrease now uh, scatter anti scatter grids decrease scatter reaching the patient and uh, not the scatter produced from the patient as we discussed another few points is that uh, scan anti scatter grids do not decrease do not decrease geometric distortion of the image anti scatter grids do not absorb the primary beam or primary radiation they are uh, absorbing the scatter radiation the placer bar grids are not used as uh, imaging of extremities imaging of children or when an air gap technique is used now one alternative to using an anti scatter grid is to use a slot collimator typically 5 mm wide so what happens is only parallel rays are transmitted any oblique ray is cut off by the collimator and this uh, technology is used in ct to make scout images so what happens is you have a detector here and the patient is here and then there is a, an initial beam of x ray but from this beam what we do is we use a slot collimator and we let out only a very narrow beam so from here only one small narrow oh, ray comes and then passes through the patient to reach the detector so in this way by using a very narrow beam uh, we are actually able to decrease the scatter and by any chance suppose this ray gets scattered what happens is it will miss the detector and go out so this is this technique is used in CT to make scout images but the problem is we are using a very narrow beam so if you want to cover the entire patient it takes a lot of time so in normal cases it's not very practical uh, coming to types of grids two types are there one is uh, unfocused grid so in that case the grids will be oriented parallelly they are focused at infinity another one is focus grid so in this one the all the strips are tilted uh, so that they all point to a focus but the thing is that uh, they, it must be used as a specific distance from the anode if you are not exactly using the strips at if you are not exactly keeping the object at this point what happens is all the useful radiation can get cut off now one point is um, it must not the focus grids must not be tilted about an axis parallel to the lead strips now magnification of images so imagine this is the x-ray tube focus so from this line source x-rays are being produced and the length of this line measures small f and here an object is there and here the film is placed now the distance from the x-ray tube focus to the film this entire distance is marked by capital F now the distance of the x-ray tube from the subject or object is uh, this distance and this is marked by O the distance of the subject from the film this distance this is marked by h so the formula for calculating magnification is f divided by o so f is the distance of the x-ray tube from the film divided by the distance of the x-ray tube from the subject so uh, this is the formula magnification is equal to f by o it is the ratio of the distance of the film from the source of the x-ray to the ratio of the distance of the subject from the source of the x-ray now the reason why magnification occurs is because x-rays are diverging from the source so if you can if you notice from here the x-rays are coming in now uh, they are diverging they are not parallel so if the x-rays were parallel they would have made a similar size similar size of a picture of the image but since they are diverging the actual film that the actual image that is formed will be larger now uh, something they might ask is 
uh, what happens when the source to film distance is increased so source to film distance this is source this is the film so this distance is f when it's increased uh, of course magnification increases so this one magnification increases next one is what happens when source to object uh, distance increases so this is the source this is the object uh, when this distance increases if we look at the formula when this value increases so it decreases the magnification decreases uh, another thing they might ask you is what happens when you increase the object screen distance so this distance this edge uh, but the thing is they need to mention if the film focus distance is same so supposing that the film focus distance this capital f is same if you are increasing the object screen distance which means instead of the subject being here suppose the subject was here at, at this level then what happens is o is reduced and coming to the formula f by o o is reduced so in this case also magnification increases assuming that the film to focus distance is kept constant now uh, coming to distortion distortion of the image uh, can be due to a tilted object uh, like a circle circle appearing as an ellipse <coughs> or it can be due to differential magnification and this is because uh, objects nearer to the source of the x-ray uh, will be magnified a little bit more uh, just to understand how that happens so suppose you have the anode here the anode is angled and from here uh, x-rays are coming so what happens is you have many x-rays which are coming here and from here all of them deflect and suppose they go in this pattern and suppose you have an object uh, that is here and uh, on the posterior side you have a film so uh, if you can look at this uh, even though the object might be uh, very regular what happens is the angled rays are actually uh, on this side of the image where there is a little bit more angle what happens is this part of the uh, image is magnified a little bit more but on this side the rays are a little bit more perpendicular so uh, there is not a lot of magnification occurring here but on the other side there is a little bit more and because of that uh, there will be a little bit of uh, distortion of the image now one way you can tackle distortion is just by simply using a large uh, film to focus distance so what this happens is it will decrease the obvious uh, distortion of the image when you are actually decreasing the uh, focus to film distance now uh, geometrical unsharp unsharpness the image of a stationary subject produced by the beam from an ideal point source would be perfectly sharp but since x-ray focuses are not a point source images appear unsharp now if you just uh, if you notice here this the point from where or the region from where x-rays are produced is a line source and this one is not a point source actually if this was a point source then all the image that we get would have been uh, very clear but because uh, it is a line source uh, all the edges of the image will not be perfectly clear uh, and ideally uh, you want this to be as small as possible so that the edges would be more clear um, so geometrical unsharpness can be decreased by using a smaller focal spot it can be uh, decreased by decreasing the object film distance and it can be decreased by using a longer film to focus distance so this is the uh, formula f into h by o just to recap the parameters so uh, geometrical unsharpness is determined by focal spot size into object film distance divided by the distance of the object from the source uh, some questions which they might ask is uh, regarding related to 
geometrical unsharpness increases with a decrease in helium 2 focus distance and also geometrical unsharpness decreases to the anode side so actually a longer film to focus distance will uh, help in reducing distortion geometrical unsharpness and all these things so uh, so uh, any uh, geometrical unsharpness uh, can be decreased by increasing the film to focus distance and another thing is uh, geometrical unsharpness decreases toward the anode side so if you look uh, at this picture this will be the cathode side and this will be the anode side uh, x-rays are produced x-rays are hitting the anode I'm sorry uh, electrons are being produced electrons are hitting the anode x-rays are being produced so uh, towards the cathode side that is this side uh, actually it will be a little bit more because this side of the image is a little bit magnified so what happens is all the unsharpness will be appearing more prominent because this side is more prominent or like more magnified so uh, just keep these two points in mind it is uh, important and they might ask it uh, next one is movement unsharpness it is due to movement of the patient as the name suggests and it is exaggerated by parameters causing geometrical unsharpness for example increased object film distance and basically anything that magnifies the image will make the movement unsharpness more prominent so anything that magnifies the image will increase uh, movement unsharpness now movement unsharpness can be reduced by uh, decreasing the exposure time but the problem is that it will require an increase in ma and hence patient dose uh, it can be reduced by immobilizing the patient uh, geometrical unsharpness can theoretically increase if M ma necessitates a larger focus or uh, because of blooming so uh, so actually this point is regarding geometrical unsharpness uh, I I think I intended to put it here but somehow it got down so anyway uh, I think if they ask a question whether uh, an increase in MA actually causes more geometrical unsharpness I think you should write it as true because theoretically uh, what happens is a uh, little bit of blooming can happen what blooming is is that when you have a high current what happens is instead of the all the electrons which normally go uh, like parallel because of the high current what happens is they become a little bit more wide and because of that the focal spot of the anode is increased and because of that a little bit of uh, unsharpness will occur and also another way is that uh, if you are increasing the MA then uh, you might have to use a larger focus so in that way also um, geometrical unsharpness will increase uh, next one is absorption and un unsharpness this is actually relate not related to the imaging system but it is because of the subject so it occurs in objects that don't have per perfectly well defined borders so some objects with tapered ends when they are exposed to the x-rays they will like show a little bit of ill-defined border now just some key points regarding film to focus distance normal it's about 65 centimeter now an increased film to focus distance helps reduce the patient dose it reduces the uh, magnification if we consider the subject film distance as constant it reduces uh, geometrical unsharpness it improves field uniformity uh, you might be a little bit confused here because earlier we had mentioned that film to focus uh, distance is uh, it uh, increased FFT actually increases magnification but actually the key point is that if this is mentioned like that the subject film con distance is constant then actually what you see is uh, the magnification will be a little bit less so actually how to understand is that uh, just consider an x-ray focus here and then you have an object and then you have a film so in the first case uh, just imagine that the film to focus distance 
suppose it's four entire distance is four distance from the x-ray tube focus to the object is two and the distance from the object to the film is two so earlier we had mentioned that uh, magnification is equal to film to focus distance divided by the object to the source distance so 4 by 2 in this case the magnification is 2 now in the next example what I am going to do is the same thing uh, x-ray focus is here and object is here so the film is here but only this thing this time the distance is going to be increased so this film to focus distance this time is going to be 5 now here it is specifically mentioned that the subject film distance is constant as compared to the previous one so here also it will remain 2 and in this case the object the object to the tube distance will be 5 minus 2 which is 3 so in this case uh, the magnification will be uh, film to focus distance which is 5 divided by object to the source distance which is 5 by 3 uh, 5 by 3 will be something like 1 point uh, 1.6 some 6 6 something like that so as you can see that in this example uh, if you are increasing the FFT while keeping the subject film distance constant what you will note is that the magnification is actually less now coming to a little bit complicated part of the lecture the next topic is anode yield effect so what this is is uh, imagine a cathode here and from the cathode uh, electrons are being shot and this beam of electrons is hitting the anode the anode is actually angled and this is the anode so this beam of electrons hits the angled anode in an area this blue line which is known as the actual focal spot so from the cathode electrons are being produced the electrons come as a beam and this beam hits an area over the anode in an area which is known as the actual focal spot now this actual focal spot makes an angle with the perpendicular and this angle is known as the target angle or the anode angle now just know that this angle is the same as this angle here now what is happening is from the actual angle spot x-rays are being produced x-rays are being produced in all directions but here it is being filtered it is being collimated and the output uh, output x-rays are having a width which is known as the effective focal spot now just to show what happens in what happens while altering the anode angle consider two examples these are two different imaging systems so in the first one this is the actual focal spot in the second example this is the actual focal spot in both the examples the uh, anodes are being hit by a beam of electrons and in the first case this is the anode angle and in the second case this is the anode angle which is larger than the first one in both the cases the effective focal spot size has been made constant so uh, if you notice in the first example with the, in the one with lesser or smaller anode angle uh, what happened is the actual focal spot size is much more larger in order to maintain the same effective focal spot compared to the other one so in the one with the larger anode angle uh, to maintain that same effective focal spot size the actual focal spot actually became smaller actual focal spot determines the area over which the heat is spread and thus determines the heat loading of the tube increase in an actual focal spot allows for an higher MAS or KB to be used 
because he has it has a higher uh, heat loading capability and it has no effect on a uh, contrast resolution or scatter so this is uh, an important point and they might ask you now the effective focal spot is what determines the field covered smaller fields are used in mammography and uh, larger effective focal spots are used in normal radiography now there are actually three things uh, which the effective focal spot depends on and these are target angle the filament size and the applied kv so if you are just imagining this system itself only this one so what happens is if you uh, decrease the angle or like you if you try to make the uh, anode more perpendicular what happens is uh, the effective focal spot size will be reduced because in this case the um, because of the angle there is like a wider area and there is giving a more uh, larger effective focal spot size but the moment you make it a uh, little bit perpendicular what is happening is uh, only this area here would actually form the effective focal spot and thus the size is actually reduced another one is uh, filament size if you if in this system itself if you are decreasing the size of the filament then also the both the actual focal spot size and the effective focal spot size would be decreased and uh, the books have mentioned that it is also dependent on kv uh, i'm not exactly sure how uh the target angle is normally 7 to 20 degree a smaller or a steeper target angle serves to increase the heat rating for the given effective focal spot size so this was our first example in which one we used a small angle to get a much more larger actual focal spot size and by that way increasing the tube loading heat loading of the system typical focal spot sizes are 0.3 mm for mammography and in magnified mammography 0.1 mm uh, 0.6 to 1.2 mm for general radiography 0.6 for fluoro and 0.6 to 1 mm for ct scanning <coughs> now focal spot size depends on both ma and kv this is because in high ma uh, in a high ma what happens is there is something called blooming so instead of hitting the target if you have a high ma what happens is this electron beam becomes much more wider and because of this wide wide beam the actual focal spot size increases uh, uh, focal spot size is also dependent on kv uh, the books have mentioned i am not sure how uh, as ma increases the focusing of the electron beam becomes less effective and it spreads out and this is known as blooming the actual focal spot size also depends on dimensions of the filament tungsten coil construction of the focusing cup position of the filament in the focusing cup so actually all the what all of these uh, are actually uh, affecting is the width of the electron beam so all the dimension of the coil construction of the cups everything uh, all of this actually determines the width of the electron beam that is being formed here and that is how it is affecting the actual focal spot now uh, heat management is a big problem in x-ray systems uh, one key point is that the radiation of heat is proportional to both the power of the temperature in kelvin the anode disk and its stem require a high melting point and a relatively low conduction rate in its stem a rotating anode will allow for a higher tube rating uh so they might try to ask you they might give a sentence like in a rotating anode the heat production is less but uh, actually the point to note is that the heat production is same but the uh, heat dissipation is much more faster uh, non rotating tubes are preferred in mobile units as well as dental radiography now the allowable ma or the heat loading of the tube decreases as the exposure time is lengthened because the more the time the anode is exposed the more heat is produced decreases as the kv is increased because the electrons will come with a higher velocity and more heat is produced increases with the effective focal spot size and uh, for a given effective focal spot 
is greater for small uh, target angle this is what we discussed previous like smaller target angles giving a better heat reading it is uh, greater for a rotating uh, anode and that is because of heat dissipation uh, it is greater in a rotating anode tube with a larger disc diameter and it also greater for a high speed rotating anode compared to a low speed rotating anode and for exposure shorter than one second uh, the heat rating is greater for a constant potential than a single phase pulsating potential because uh, in a constant potential a current flows the entire time uh, but when you have a pulsating potential what happens is uh, it gets uh, the op opposite ones get filtered and there are some gaps so there are times when current is actually not flowing but when you have a constant potential during the entire time current flows uh, the thermal rating is better if a smaller angle anode angle is used and also uh, it depends on the weight of the anode like if you are using more material in the anode then there is uh, more space like more uh, capacity for the anode to uh, store the heat uh, anode storage anode heat storage capacity is the main limiting factor for x-ray equipment now for continuous systems like fluoroscopy the heat capacity actually depends only on the cooling rate of the house tubing and not on the focal spot size or type of generator so in fluoroscopy uh, the heat capacity is not based on uh, the heat production but it is based on the cooling of the tube now there are some other ratings in x-ray tubes there is a maximum kv that can be applied uh, and that depends on the insulation cables and all those things there is a maximum ma limit that can be applied now one thing to note is that the maximum ma is smaller as a low kilovolt than at a high kilovolt and that is because of something called space charge effect so supposing uh, at maybe like 70 kilovolt the maximum ma that is allowed is supposing it's 50 but uh, if you are having a higher kilovolt maybe like 150 and then you can actually use 100 so we might think that it is inversely proportional but it's actually directly proportional and the reason is uh, something known as space charge effect now we'll discuss something known as the anode heel effect so if you look at this image uh, from the cathode uh, electrons are being made electrons are hitting the anode and from here x-rays are being produced and x-rays are going to the target but if you look closely at this image you will note that the electrons are passing a few a small distance into the anode before the x-rays are being produced so the x-rays are not being produced at the surface of the anode they are actually being produced uh, at a small depth inside the anode so what this uh, affects is if you look at these three rays one of the ray is towards the anode side this is the anode side ray the other way is towards the cathode side so this anode side ray has to actually pass through a lot of substance within the anode to actually reach the target but this ray here it doesn't have to pass through that much substance to reach the target so what happens is this ray here is attenuated or filtered more compared to uh, the ray here So anode yield effect is because of attenuation of x-rays at the anode the intensity of the beam decreases uh, across the field especially towards the anode side the this results in a higher mean energy spectrum of the beam on the anode side so this is the anode side so the net net effect is something like putting a filter and the rays on this side are filtered more compared to the rays on this side the half value layer increases because of the filtration effect the effective focal spot decreases the effective focal spot size decreases because towards the anode side 
the rays are becoming filtered much much more so uh, it is actually decreasing the width of the beam on that side the steeper the target the greater is the heel effect so that means that the more perpendicular the anode is the more will be the uh, anode heel effect now uh, anode heel effect is greater on the anode side of the x-ray field and more pronounced at smaller anode angles and lesser kpp so uh, the more perpendicular the anode is the more will be the uh, anode heel effect and uh, what happens in higher kvp is that uh, the the x-rays will have more energy so actually this the effect this anode heel effect is all about filtration and if you have uh, x-rays of very high energy then that filtration effect will be less prominent and that is why anode heel effect will be like uh, less prominent at higher kvps uh, the high anode heel effect occurs in a direction which is parallel to the anode cathode axis. It is more prominent in old X-ray tubes with worn out anodes and irregular surfaces. So uh, the more rugged or irregular the surfaces, more will be uh, the anode heel effect. And uh, anode heel effect also uh, decreases with a long focus to film distance as uh, in this case the uh, only the central part of the beam is used so both the beams at the anode or the cathode side are not used so there is not much a difference in the central part and because of the heel effect uh, by positioning a patient with denser part towards the cathode uh, we can actually uh, we can actually position a patient uh, who with the denser tissues on the cathode side because this is the anode side the anode side the x-rays are weaker and on the cathode side X-rays are stronger. So how we can use this in mammography? The cathode side of the tube uh, should be placed towards the chest wall. So you can remember it like cathode chest wall. And in an AP or AP view of the thoracic spine, the cathode is placed caudally. Cathode caudally. Now something about quality maintenance. The light beam diaphragm alignment and bucky centering is done one to two uh, monthly. Uh, before the X-ray is shot, there is a small uh, light that shows the alignment of the X-ray, and that is the light beam uh, diaphragm. And this uh, alignment is done one to two monthly. The uh, voltage is generally measured indirectly using a penetrometer, step wedge, or a digital KV meter. The output of the tube can be measured using a dosimeter, either an ionization chamber or a solid heat detector. The total filtration is assessed by me measurement of half value layer. The focal spot size, uh, or in they can also ask like how is spatial resolution measured? It is measured uh, using a pinhole camera. So a pinhole camera can measure the actual focal spot size, and a star test tool can be used to see the resolving capacity of the focal spot size focal spot so the pinhole camera will give you the actual focal spot size like how much millimeter and the star test tool is actually used to see the resolving capacity now just uh, something about rotating anode so the rotating anode consists of a central anode disc which is made up of uh, molybdenum or graphite the anode disc is surrounded by a target annulus and this is made up of uh, tungsten and uh, rhenium uh, so this is like from the top view uh, so it has some more parts so on the top you will have the anode disc and then you have a stem which is made up of uh, molybdenum and at the bottom you have blackened copper rotor uh, so this is all about uh, imaging with x-rays uh, so along with this and the other video on uh, x-ray protection uh, i think you should be able to answer almost like 90% uh, of the questions because uh, even though the questions aren't direct uh, all the questions will be based on the principles or like points that uh, are mentioned so i think the still again i'd like to remind 
that the main main thing you have to always keep in mind is to read the questions properly because uh, they try to trick you a lot and they kind of change uh, some of the words in the question and then uh, you don't have a lot of time and then you're under a lot of pressure so you don't pay a lot of attention to um, each minute detail in the question um, and uh, questions don't usually repeat but the thing is all the basic concepts uh, will always be the same so instead of uh, simply like one time they'll ask what happens when kvp is increased the next time they'll ask uh, what happens when kvp is decreased uh, so, and then maybe the next time it will be about ma so the thing is like the principles are always same but they just keep making new questions uh, and uh, along with this uh, you will have to read the fast book and some mcq books um uh, the the link to the notes will be uh, in the description uh, hope this video was uh, useful to everyone who watched thank you